all I knew that I was somewhere that I never wanted to come out of. I was being rocked. I don't know if it was my mother's arms or whose arms, but I'm being rocked. I'm an infant being rocked and it felt so wonderful and so beautiful. Words, as we know them here on earth, do not exist to describe the feeling, but it felt wonderful. Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. I hope that wherever you are, you're safe and well. Now today I would like to talk to you about my near-death experience. Now back then, I was what you would call a lukewarm Christian. I was someone that believed in God and I loved God, but I was neither hot nor cold. I sat on the fence and I was neither here nor there. So back then, uh, this is a little hard to talk about, but I wanted to share it with you guys because maybe someone will get something from it. So I have a young brother and me and him are like this were very close and back then he was into drugs now that was a long time ago and he's no longer um, using drugs he's been clean for many years but back then it was a different story so weeks had gone by and the family had not heard anything from him we would call him, he would not return our calls, and we were concerned for his safety. And he was living in a state far away, and there were no family members where he lived, and so there was no one we could contact to say, can you go check on him? And so we were very concerned, and I remember I used to pray to God that he would look after my brother and, and that he would be all right because my concern was that he did drugs and he overdosed and he's somewhere, maybe at home, dead. And who would know, right? So I remember praying and praying to God, please, Lord, look after my brother please look after my brother and so one night it was around maybe nine o'clock at night and i'm by myself in my office and my husband's working late the only one home with me at the time were my kitty cats and all of a sudden my phone rings and it's my brother. He's calling me. And he said to me that he hadn't returned calls because yes, he had uh, gone and done drugs and he was very ashamed to come forward and tell the family. And so when I heard his voice, I was so excited, so very excited and thankful. And I had been eating something at the time that he called me, like a snack. And when I heard his voice and I knew that he was okay, I was so happy and thankful. And in that moment, I guess I must have done something like, <gasps> in my excitement, and something of what I was eating went down the wrong tube and I started choking and there was no one there to help me. 
And I had taken all the classes that you take about what to do in a situation like that, get behind a chair and do this, right? All those things that you learn about that you're supposed to do, I didn't remember any of it. It all went out the window. And I'm there in my moment of panic when I realized, and it was instant, I knew what was going on and I was frightened because I knew that if I didn't get oxygen inside of me, I was going to die. And my worry was that what was it going to do to my brother when he realized that he was the last person to hear me alive? It's going to send him in a nosedive. And this time, he might not come out of it. And if he died of an overdose, what was I going to do to my parents? My parents were elderly. They were up there like in their 80s. They were frail. And if he died, what was I going to do to him? my mother and father? And knowing that I died also, it was going to crush my mother and it might kill her. And if she died, who was going to be there to take care of my dad? So in that moment, I wasn't thinking about myself because I got to the point where I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. All I could hear was my brother on the cell phone saying, Grace, Grace, are you okay? Are you okay? And I couldn't communicate with him. All I could do, I remember vividly, I kept hitting my cell phone on my thigh. What is that going to do? <laughs> right? He's in another state. What was that going to say to him? I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe. And that's all I kept hearing. Grace, 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 are you okay? Are you okay? And it got to the point where I knew that my time here on earth was going to be over very soon. And I resigned myself to that. And I remember thinking, now listen, all these things happened like that. It was like water flowing. It was so fast. My brother, grace, 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 me. <gasps> I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And I knew, Grace, your time has come. And all I, I kept thinking about at that time, because I knew, okay, we all have to go one day, right? So this was my day. And I remember thinking to myself, this isn't how I wanted to go, Lord. And I was just asking God, please, please look after my brother. Look after my mother. Look after my father. What is my passing going to do to them? And, you know, in God's realm, there's no time. Time does not exist in God's realm. So even though in my world, at the time, things were moving fast, fast. It was like, like I said, water just rushing. And all I could think of was my family. What was it going to do to them? And I remember 
having the thought and I said, Lord, forgive me because I knew that I had not been the best Christian. I had not been the best person I could have been. And I just kept saying, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. But look after my family, please. Don't let them suffer after I'm gone. And let me tell you, this is where the miraculous part happened. And what I'm going to say to you, it's going to be hard to describe, but when I'm there, not breathing, not breathing, realizing up here, I'm going to die very soon. All of a sudden, I found myself, I felt like I was in my mother's arms. I was an infant and I was being rocked in my mother's loving arms. And this place where I was at was beautiful. It was just, no words can describe the feeling. But I was here. I was no longer, <gasps> that went away. My brother on the phone, Grace, Grace, that went away. Everything that made up my reality at the moment disappeared. There was nothing, nothing where I was, nothing existed. There was no computer monitor on my desk. There were no wall hangings. There was no windows. There was no wall. There was nothing. I'm in this place where nothing existed. You looked around and there was nothing to tell you, oh, you know, I'm in my bedroom or wherever. Nothing existed in this place where I was at the time. All I knew that I was somewhere that I never wanted to come out of. I was being rocked. I don't know if it was my mother's arms or whose arms, but I'm being rocked. I'm an infant being rocked and it felt so wonderful and so beautiful. Words as we know him here on earth do not exist to describe the feeling, but it felt wonderful. And I was happy. And then I felt warm, a warmth that just envelops you. Like if you've been baking something and you open the oven door and the heat comes out and it feels good. That's what I was feeling. I was here. I was feeling this beautiful warmth. And all of a sudden, I felt tingling. Like when your hand falls asleep and you have pinpricks on your hand. Well, the pinpricks started on the top of my head, okay? And all this time in my head, I'm just loving where I am. I'm no longer panicking. I'm no longer doing this, trying to get some air in my lungs. I was here. 
and I felt the tingling sensation on the top of my head and the tingling sensation started going down, down, down and it was beautiful and it kept going down, down, down and when it got to about my neck area all of a sudden I started to cough <laughs> I started coughing and a little bit of air started getting in inside and then all of a sudden this is the part I did not like all of a sudden I came back into the world and I was back in my office and my brother Grace Grace are you all right are you all right and I was so sad because I wanted to go back desperately I wanted to go back to this place where I was the warmth the rocking the beautiful beautiful bliss in which I found myself briefly and so when I started coughing I realized okay air is getting in and I don't know how I did it but I was able to talk to my brother very I mean barely able to talk to him and I said to him I don't know what just happened but I'm gonna have to call you back and he said to me Grace he said I was so worried about you he said you don't realize what terrible sounds you were making he said it sounded like someone was pulling a very heavy table across a linoleum floor and it was making a terrible screeching sound and he said and I was frightened for you and I couldn't do anything so I told him I'll call you back and I hung up and all of a sudden I was like a sack of potatoes okay my legs my knees gave out on me and I went down hard like a sack of potatoes the phone fell out of my hand and I'm on all fours on the floor I'm still barely breathing but I'm breathing and I'm coughing and when I was finally able to breathe more or less normally I started crying and crying and crying unconsolably and I kept saying Lord why 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 did you bring me back to this terrible world why couldn't you have kept me there because that place where I was does not exist here on earth it was a beautiful beautiful feeling and I didn't want to be here I wanted to be where I was I said why Lord why did you bring me back why didn't you let me stay and he said not yet those were his words not yet and I knew the reason why he brought me back was because 
I had something that I still had to do. God had given me a task to do and I couldn't leave this earth until I did it. And so I finally regained myself and I was still crying. I was even upset with God. I was like, why? Why? Why did you bring me back? I couldn't understand. I didn't want to accept that God didn't want me up there yet. But he said, not yet. So after that happened, I went on a, qu on a quest. I wanted to know why God had brought me back because I knew there was something that I still needed to do before that final day came. But God wasn't answering my question. What? What? What am I supposed to do? Tell me. Why don't you make it clear to me? Tell me what I'm supposed to do. Don't let me guess. And so about a year went by. And I went back to church. And I started reading my Bible again. That incident brought me back to God, okay? I was no longer lukewarm, okay? But I still didn't know why or what God wanted me to do here on earth. So I went on a quest. I prayed incessantly, send me the message that I need to get and he wasn't responding. And a year went by and that memory had started to fade. And one day I was flipping through a magazine and I came upon an article that talked about the uh, homeless situation in the U.S., how dire it is. And when I flipped the page, the first thing I saw was a picture of a homeless man. And boom, right there, that picture was my answer. Don't ask me how I knew, but I just knew right there. You've been spinning like crazy trying to get the answer as to what you were supposed to do. And now it's right there in front of your eyes. Because when I saw that picture of the homeless man, something, I can't tell you what it was, but something hit me hard in my spirit. And I knew this, this is the answer I've been searching for. And shortly after that, I started my nonprofit ministry because I knew God wanted me to do something that had to do with a homeless, uh, homeless situation, the homeless problem the homeless and I started putting action into it and I started um, the wheels turning and I started my nonprofit homeless ministry so you see understand that you and I were not placed here on earth just to take up space, okay? You were placed here on earth 
for a reason. There is a purpose for your existence, okay? You may not know what it is, and that purpose doesn't have to be you going out and starting a nonprofit, okay? Your purpose can be something small, okay? Maybe there is someone somewhere that's contemplating suicide, that needs a kind word, that needs words of encouragement, go do it. Maybe there's somebody, an elderly person somewhere that has been forgotten by their family and they're sitting alone in their apartment crying. Find them. Only God knows, okay, what your purpose is. I'm just giving you examples. I truly feel in my heart that my purpose for being placed here on earth was to start a homeless ministry. Because once I started it, I bloomed. I was like a flower. I bloomed and I've never been so happy. This is the homeless ministry that I started, Amazing Grace Empowerment Ministries, Inc. We're a nonprofit homeless ministry. Check us out on Facebook and our website, okay? And a picture very similar to this is the one I saw that really got me here. So, I hope that what I shared with you has inspired you, okay? And made you think. Um, I don't know, like I said, what your purpose in life is. Only God knows. And one day He's going to reveal that to you. And believe me, it could happen when you least expect it. Okay, and remember your purpose may not be something huge and monumental. It could just be something small, like I mentioned. So find out what that is, okay? You were not here by accident, okay? Even if you consider yourself um, a child that came into the world that it was an accident, your parents never intended to have you, but oops, you know, we did it again. <laughs> Let me tell you, that oops does not exist. You were placed here on earth at the right time and for a specific reason. So don't ever feel that you don't have a purpose in life, okay? That's what Satan wants you to think. He wants you to think that you were an accident, that you're unloved, that you were never supposed to be here. You're here for a reason, okay? And God knows what it is. So I hope I gave you something to think about. I hope I encouraged you in some way. This was a very um, emotional thing for me to talk about, okay? Very few people have heard my story. And every time I, I talk about it, even now, I cry because it was that powerful. Please consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for stopping by and visiting with us. You know, I always say, we're just a little mustard seed. But guess what? The other day, God set me straight, okay? I was thinking that. We're just a little mustard seed. And the thought that came to me, 
he said to me, it's not about the masses. It's about the few that do show up to watch your videos. <laughs> I loved it. And it is so true, okay. So subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. Come back and visit him with us. Share the video if you think someone can get something positive from it. Listen, YouTube is a wonderful tool. And think about the great things you can do with it. You can use YouTube to share God's Word to the whole world. So use it for good, all right? And don't forget, sweetie, God loves you very very much okay come back and visit with us and if you ever want to leave me a private message on facebook or or the website do so and in my little way i'll try and help you maybe just words of encouragement we all need encouraging so come back and visit with us okay stay safe all right Bye-bye, sweetie.